Well, this happening. is probably going to lead me to my third. Uh, the, the third critical choice I made was to build trust. A, a, a little comment that you made me think of there is when we think about inspiring the trust of others, you know, we are more likely to trust someone who is like us than someone whom we like. You know, there there is that connection of someone who is like us versus, oh, you know what, he's funny or he's likable or no, yeah. this person is like me. Um, so when I made this choice to build trust, it really started with I had to build trust in myself because there was not, right? Like it just didn't exist. Then once I built trust in myself slowly, I then learned how to inspire the trust of others. So much so that a huge part of my business now, and you know that as I work with teams and uh, around inspiring trust internally and, and externally. So I believe in it so much. For you, I want to ask you probably two parts to building trust. I'd like to start with uh, a time in which you've had to build trust in yourself and how did you do it? Like if you can dig deep and think about how you built trust in yourself or how you continue to, and then I'll get to inspiring the trust of others. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I, I have a good example there. So uh, look, last year, last year was a tough year for me and uh, just getting anything going. And part of that, I, I know part of that is just this, the, you know, getting dragged back to court all the time. It's just, it's just, we can't, you know, you got it when in a divorce, you know, that was nine years ago. And at some point you, it's hard to heal when somebody's still wanting to fight about stuff. And so uh, that, that really was a lot of, that was a tough year for me last year. And I realized, I realized I was, was lacking a lot of confidence and I, I was just getting stuck and having a hard time moving forward. And so I, I decided I wanted to build some evidence for myself that I can keep my promises to myself. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to run the New York marathon and I'm going to hire a coach and what she did for me. And, and the funny thing was I had to commit to talking to this coach because she's, her name's Heather Peck Knight and she's won the Boston marathon. She's won her division in the Boston marathon three times. And she set the world record for the half marathon last year uh, in her in her division. I mean, she's amazing. And she works with all these people who qualify for the Olympics and things like that. And I thought, you know, I have no business working with this woman. But I knew her and uh, I, I was I, I wanted to meet with her and talk to her and say, um, you know, let's let's see. Let's both see if this might be a fit. But I pretty I assumed she was going to put pass me on to somebody on her team who might have been a better fit. But. I had to, I definitely had to get myself up. I had to get up the courage and build mm -hmm. my confidence to talk with her and uh, say, look, can we have this meeting and talk about this possibility? And, um, and then, but I knew if, you know, I ended up, she, she, it's okay. I'm getting into no, a little keep bit of going. story, but let me, okay. Let me tell you this. This was really cool. So I, I knew she's going to ask me about stats and what's your pace and this, that, you know, what races do you want to, and all the, you know, just all the stuff, the hardcore stuff, which I was not qualified to answer, <laughs> but we get on the phone, we chat for a while. And then she says to me, I, I'm talking about something. She kind of stops me and she says, listen, why did you drop out of the frozen feet challenge? And that's this, uh, my friend Megan Searfoss owns this Richfield running company and they have this from January 1st, I think in the mid February, you sign up and you, you commit to doing a mile, either walking or running a mile outdoors every single day. And you know, that's, that's And you posted something recently on LinkedIn that I saw and you were not going to go for your walk, but you did. And it, or, oh, that was, yeah, that was just recently yeah. and you, it was cold and I see the, the air coming out of your mouth and you're bundled yeah. up. Okay. So keep going. See, I'm along your yes. journey with you. Keep going. Yes. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, the, so the, I guess last year, Heather asked me why I dropped out and I just sighed and I said, you know what? I believe this lie that um, I couldn't do it. I believe this lie that I just had 
so much going on with my life. We were at my ex-wife and I were, <laughs> we had, we had to go back to court on Valentine's day. Uh, and, uh, and not that that matters because there was no, you know, affection in our marriage. It wasn't, there's no sadness about that, but we were going back on Valentine's day. And I just, I, I allowed, I allowed just the drama and the pain of everything, the pain and just meaning like accusations and, and things like that. And just having to defend yourself and stand up for yourself. And the fact that I didn't stand up for myself for the first, you know, I don't know, five years after the divorce or the 20 years of marriage, there's a lot of, there's a lot of regret about that. And I just got wound up in it. And I was one day, I just said, screw it. Like I said, in that video, I said, screw it. I'm not going. And it was kind of out of anger, I guess. But of course I didn't mm -hmm. serve you to drop out of something. It doesn't serve you. But I told her, I said, that was it. And I said, that's, that's why I dropped out of it. That was my answer to her question. But that question just threw me. I was like, why in the world would you ask me that? But, you know, she's, she's just getting an idea of who I am and what I need. And so she, she says, okay, I'll take you, you know, as a client. And, you know, people wait for sometimes a year to get, to get on, to get, to become a client of hers. And I, I think, uh, I think she, she felt confident she could reach me. And so I get this workout, I'm, uh, you know, she's going to put a plan together, you know, here's how you're going to get ready for the marathon in November. And I know it's all going to be technical stuff that I don't know what she's talking about, about racing and pacing and all this stuff. And the number one thing on there is she says, okay, I want you to run with people who love you. And I was like, what? And I thought that was, I just, I was so caught off guard that this woman who, who, who performs at, at such a high level, you know, is going to be able to reach me emotionally. I just was so caught off guard by that. And, uh, but it, it, you know, I was like, okay, I found the right person and I'm so glad I got my confidence up because I'm certainly not qualified to work with her. You know, if you think about the people who their goals mm -hmm. and what they're trying to do, but again, that's, that's shifting what we talked about in the first choice. You know, it's this idea of like, let me look at the, 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 you know, I hate this term KPIs, yeah, you know, the right. key performance indicator. Let me look at those differently. Maybe it's not about getting a laugh every mm. time. Maybe, maybe it's about connecting with somebody and maybe I just want to get out here and maybe there's, I'm at a conference with 3000 people. Maybe this message is for one person, you know, who, who's in a really dark place right now and, and maybe if I just let them know I've struggled with depression too, you know, but there's, I've found ways to manage it through being with friends, through laughing, through getting out on the trails. You know, I've been through an ugly divorce too. I get that, you know, maybe it's just for one person and I'll never know. So I just count it as a win. I just say, okay, I know I got it, you know, but I'll never know if it's right. I ran with Heather. She does these, <laughs> my, my, my friend who owns the running store, Megan, I was running the trail. I was, we were hiking the trails uh, a week ago and she saw a photo of me where I was with Heather down in New Canaan doing these oh, speed geez. workouts. And she was like, what are you doing? What? She said, what are you training for? You're doing speed workouts with Heather? I said, no, no, I just needed to be with Heather. You know, I just went down there to be with her and to, and she, you know, we're, we're running in at the, at a high school track. And the inside, there's an inside loop, of course, which is always the fastest. And so, and, and I guess there's a little bit of a protocol to, if you're running slower to move mm. out to an outer lane, you know, so the, 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 the speedsters can get by quickly. And this, I just think it's a courteous, respectful thing to do. So I was out on the, the very last lane, which I did not beat. That, that tells you something about where yeah. my mind was in. I was the very last lane. And Heather says, move to the inside lane. She said, you deserve to be here. And I was like, man, this woman gets me, you know, and she, she knew, she knew what I was doing on the outside lane. And, and, anyway, and you went to the inside lane. There, it, it, I did. I did. And I was very, but I was very respectful for, mm -hmm. there were like five or six other women there training with me who, and they're all killers. I mean, they're all just, you know, sub three marathons training for, you know, amazing people. And so, uh, but of course I was courteous. I got out of their mm -hmm. way when they came up. And, uh, but those women too, they're also, they're just so, they're so kind to me when I show up there, you know, they don't, 
they don't look down at me for being slow or anything, but they're just, they're really kind to me. And uh, it does, it makes me feel, yeah, it, it makes wow. me feel worthy just to go and spend time you... there take action first off you listen to advice from someone you respect and then you take action on that advice which is a choice and you know action after action starts to create and build more trust in the things that we're doing and the choices that we're making and yeah i don't need to be on the outside lane in fact i can be in the inside lane and still be true to who I am from a respect standpoint with others, but I'm worthy of being in the inside lane. And I think that's awesome. And the other thing that made me think about the story here is the two-way agreement that you entered into between you and Michelle, right? Michelle, I got it right, Michelle. Uh, Yeah, Heather, uh, Heather. 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 Yeah, Heather. You're right. That yeah. was your- but yeah, because th- to me, like I think about that two way agreement because it requires you to commit. She committed to you. You committed to her. You completed the New York Marathon. But it's the yeah. experience along the way of building trust in yourself and then creating, you know, this I'm worthy. That's right. That's right. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Choose and Become interview series. To check out more episodes, go to www.trishkendall.com backslash podcast, or go to any of your favorite podcast channels, including YouTube under Trish Kendall Speaks, and you'll find this interview and more. Choose and Become.